I'm observing this body of mine, feeling this body of mine, and I can identify with my body and be my body at this point. I can take it one step further and observe myself while I sit here. Now I have two people. The body that sits here and the one that is observing this body. Now I can't be both. Am I this one or the one who observes my body? Now obviously I feel more alive in the one that observes this body. That is where my experience lies. And since I can't be both, I'm not this body, I'm something more fast. And yet, if I take it one step further, I'm aware of that somebody is observing this body. Now I have three. My body, the observer, and the one that is aware that there is an observer. And I can take it one step further that I'm aware of that there is awareness of an observer that sees a body. And there's awareness. Awareness of awareness. And then at one point I lose it. I don't know. I go beyond. my mind loses it and I am that I am not knowing and yet I am and automatically falling into a kind of silence and yet on the other hand when I am that I am there's no concept of whether it should be silent or not silent my mind can go on thinking of sorts of things and I can still be And the more you put your love in the everlasting world, to stay there, to be there, all that happens here in the world becomes a little bit less important. And you know the funny thing is, it comes more alive too. At first it might seem that everything is a bit less important. But after time, when 
you're really connected to the side to, to the everlasting one inside you somewhere in your psychic inside you that black potent space which can't be named with words but is able to perceive this whole universe inside it itself if you come to live more and more from that place you will see tremendous glory and beauty in a single flower and it will give you great joy just to be in your garden like I am in my garden there and then you feel that life is good and that is always yours and nobody can take it from you. Now, this whole thing of being what you are, first, started on me. When I made a trip to India, not to meditate, just to see India. And at one point in the trip, we went to Varanasi. And I was in my 20s then, early 20s. Oh, yeah. I was surrounded by thousands and thousands of really poor Indians living on the streets, on the pavement. In Varanasi you have terrace-wise built squares. And every two, four square meters there was a family, actually a family living on. No house, no nothing. Just, just that part of the pavement was that family space. And they were really poor, those people. It really struck me. That life was out there. They were burning their death on the side of the river. When I took a boat, I saw more than one baby corpse, blue swollen baby corpse, floating past my boat. It was all in the open. It was all there. Like we Westerners, when we bury someone, we take a secret black limousine and we go to a fenced cemetery and with just a small group of people we burn nobody has to know about it nobody has to see it but here in India it was all in the open although I was scared of it and I thought well if they want to kill me now they can do it nobody will ever have to know about it nobody knows about these two Dutch girls that will disappear in Varanasi can take all my belongings. Now I didn't carry a lot of belongings, but it was sort of scary in a way. You are completely defenseless. You can see thousands and thousands of other people. Foreigners. Poor. They could definitely use those few American dollars we carried around. But my curiosity one and I forgot my fear and I was so curious about how this worked don't forget I was only like 25 and it was the first time I traveled out of Europe and when I observed all these people on the pavements living on only a few square meters I saw joy I saw happiness, and when I looked in their eyes, they looked back, and I saw friendliness, happiness and friendliness. And you know, they had all the time in the world for me, which was extraordinary, you know, because here in the West, it's really difficult to look someone in the eyes. They don't have time for you, they don't have time to know who you are. And here, People had time. Actually looked at you. Looked in your eyes and 
trying to find out who, who is that other person on the other side. And I had time to look in their soul. And I saw joy, beauty, and harmony. And that is where it struck me, really struck me, that no money, no house, no boat, no education, nothing, nothing materialistic in this world, not an educated mind or sophisticated manners are needed to be what you are and once you are what you are you're sort of free timeless spaceless open and it doesn't matter if you have not one single American dollar and you live in it on the pavements. Life is good. It is always good. At that point, the seed, this seed, came into me. This whole outside existence had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with being what you are. But you've got to take it beyond your mind. Your mind and all your trying and wanting and searching for it is like a big cloud like a curtain between you and what you really are and this again is where meditation is a helpful tool to get little glimpses of what is behind this mind curtain thank you for listening <laughs>